I think Ted was having the last laugh then. Anyway, let's get serious. With me is Kirsty Henderson from the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, known as PETA, and Jim Barrington from the Countryside Alliance. Welcome to you both. Let me start with you, Kirsty. The farmers are telling Michael Crick, and they're telling you that this is about effective pest control. Mm -hmm. Two dogs can't catch a fox. You've got to have a pack of dogs. What do you say to that? Oh, hunting is cruelty to animals. It is that simple. And but about, this is pest control, not hunting, yeah. we're talking so about. So wildlife management, there is actually no credible evidence that this actually helps wildlife management. If you think about it, if you kill a fox in one area, that creates more room for other foxes to move in. It gives them more territory, more mating opportunities, more food. It could actually increase the number of foxes in that area. So you're saying let the foxes live because it'll be good for the farmers at the end of the day, it'll be good for the environment? The farmers would disagree with you. Uh, well, there's, there's no way that you can chase foxes down with a pack of hounds and rip them to pieces and do that humanely, whether it's for wildlife control or anything else. Rip them to pieces, do that humanely. A contradiction, Jim. Well, we've, we've got to be clear about what this measure is. It is an amendment to the exemptions in the, ha in the, the Act that already exists. They were agreed by both sides. The trouble is they don't work, and so this amendment actually makes them work. It's a statutory instrument and it can't overturn the main purpose of the Act, so hunting remains illegal. But if you want to talk in a broader context about what hounds do, they're unique in wildlife management because they're scenting animals, mm -hmm. they are selective, they are testing, and importantly, they're non-wounding. No but other method can claim isn't that. This a bit of a, isn't this a bit of a smokescreen, though? Because as we heard from the Baroness there, she's hoping that it, this will lead to the full legalisation of hunting. It's got, for her, it's not well, really would, anything to do so. about pest control. I would hope so. It's, it's not. It can't do, because simply because this process cannot do that. A statutory instrument cannot overturn the main purpose of a law. Yeah, I need to be very clear about something, although this is just an amendment to the, to the Hunting Act. If this is passed, this would allow hunting to continue to, to come again through the back door. And for this reason, MPs need to vote against this amendment. It's not just a slight change that will only alter the number of hounds. It is bringing back hunting, in effect. Well, why were the exemptions there in the first place? Why were they agreed by, by both sides? Um, people understand that the use of dogs, particularly the scenting hounds, is vitally important in wildlife management. Otherwise, as some people say, let's not do anything. That's, that's a bit naive. But you wouldn't disagree with Kirsty when she says that this is going to bring back hunting through the back door, because that's what you want. It's a step in the right direction, but it's mm. not repeal. I would like to see repeal, certainly, from a welfare point of view, and I, then I'd like to see a, a law that properly protects wild mammals. The Hunting Act doesn't do that. I mean, are you overreacting to this? Because you know, it is already law, you know, in Scotland, this is the way things are done. We're talking about farmers here in, in, in England who desperately need these measures to be put in place, as they say. Who are you, as an urban creature, if you don't mind me saying so, to contradict them? <laughs> well, I don't think I'm overreacting at all. We're talking about the suffering and death of thousands of animals. And the vast majority of the public in this country support the Hunting Act and they want to keep it intact. And that's why all MPs need to vote against the amendments on Tuesday. But the animals suffer all the time for the benefit of humans. Thousands of them, tens of thousands of them. So Absolutely. this is just one tiny proportion of a rather miserable larger picture, isn't it? Yeah, I could not agree with you more. However, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep the Hunting Act in a, intact to try and help these animals. Th this law took 700 hours of parliamentary time, 10 times longer than the debates going into Iraq. It cost something like £30 million to put on the statute book. And they got it wrong. Can't we spend just a few more minutes trying to at least make it somewhat right? Well, they're only going to debate it for 90 minutes next mm, week, aren't different they? to 700 hours, isn't it? Tony Blair has said that the one thing he really regrets, which may surprise you, is the fact that he introduced the, the anti-hunting bill. Well, he's certainly in disagreement with the vast majority of the public in this country who overwhelmingly support this bill. Well, you see, I disagree with that, Kirsty, because there are plenty of people. There are legal people, the police, veterinarians, wildlife experts who've said this is a rubbish law. Their senior civil servants have said the Hunting Act is a good example of bad law. How many people does it take to say this is bad law before the, the strict anti-hunters okay. believe it? OK, got to leave it there. I think you were rather civilised in the end. It wasn't exactly a hunt, but anyway, thank you very much. Sure. Jim Barrington, Kirsty Henderson, thanks okay. for coming in. Now, she's won international acclaim for her music 